Kentucky will be the best shooting team in college basketball this season. We're going to defend that take on today's episode of the Wildcats Today podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak, writer and editor over at Kentucky Wildcats on SI, joined as always by my co-host, Carson Nash. Carson, how are we feeling? It's almost the weekend. We got a, a, a not a big weekend, but a, a good weekend coming up. Yeah, uh, I'm feeling good. I'm getting excited. You know, Thursday is always better than a Tuesday. Yes, so. it is. It is. <laughs> it's why we're always in a better mood on Thursday than Tuesday. Yeah. So, getting, always looking forward, true. looking forward to the weekend for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to next weekend more so, though. We're going to go see Foreigner and the Sticks up at Riverbend. Riverbend? Yeah, Riverbend. It's going to be it's gonna be some elite stuff. I'm pretty excited about it. But no other stops while we're on that trip. Just just no casino. Constant. No. No banks. No banks. No casino. No banks. Just just river bend. Right, mom? Yeah. Lies. <laughs> but um, you know, I want you to defend that statement, Carson. Kentucky will be the best three point shooting team in college basketball. Can you defend that statement? Yeah, I can. Uh, I think it's it's a pretty obvious statement to defend as well. Um, yeah. You have a coach who whose system loves shooting threes. He was mm-hmm. the top five. They had top five attempts last year at BYU in three point and three pointers. So um, they're going to shoot a lot of them, and he brings in a class uh, collectively shooting over forty um, percent, yeah. more near the forty five actually too. So um, that's, that's those are really really good numbers and. Most of the people that we've brought in shot a good amount of three-pointers to have on that high percentage as well. So they're not just taking two a game and only hitting one. They're shooting six or seven shots and making three or four of them. So I think think we are, and I I really don't see another team. I mean, if if you all think of one, let me know, but I really don't know another team that's going to shoot as well as Kentucky does this year. Alabama is going to be good. Uh, yeah. that, that's the team that comes to mind quickly um, when it comes to at least in the SEC. But I agree with you, Carson. Yeah, Listen, but they're going to have to play a little different this year, in my opinion, because they got they have Cliff, a better big man. They yeah. got Cliff Amore, and he he is not a shooting big like Grant Nelson. They could play him at the five and go five out and shoot spread. Four. I bet they play him at the four is what they're going to do this year. I'd be curious. I, mean, I don't know. We'll yeah, but I don't I don't know if I like that as much. I really love their lineup with Grant Nelson at the five. I know he wasn't as good defensively, but man. That offense was insane. Yeah, it was one of those things. Even if he's bad defensively, if if they're making threes, it doesn't matter. Because no it's like us, if we run uh, Andrew yeah. Carr at the five instead of Kamari yeah. Williams, which I would love that. But we're gonna yeah. do that conversation for another day. But I agree with what you're saying, Carson. Last year at BYU, statistically, they didn't shoot a super high percentage. And I, I do want to pull that up. I believe. It was around their team percentage was about 34, 35, which is not. I mean terrible i mean it's not awful but it's also but how many not, three pointers did they take a game that's you also have to no weigh that's it out. not what I, that's not what i'm arguing what i'm arguing is that in those same amount of attempts this year the percentage to me i think much higher that's oh, what i'm arguing. i agree i um no yes for how many they shot for a, i would say a, a team that was solid but not elite yeah 34.8 percent they shot as a team from three I think that number is going to be substantially better this year because Coach Pope just has better shooters. I mean, like, it's the same system. You just have better shooters. He has better shooters, and he has better athletes. So people, our players are going to get to their spots faster. They're going to know what to do. Their IQ is going to be higher. Like, there's a lot of different things that go into the process other than just being good shooters. Yeah, and I'll tell you this. I'm not going to sit here and guarantee – Kentucky to be the best shooting team in college basketball. I would put it at 80%. I feel that confident. It's systematically this team's made to shoot the ball, but I will guarantee you they're a top five shoot three point shooting team in college basketball. I'll guarantee that. Top I don't, five shooting and top five attempts, both of them. Yeah. I, and I so here's the deal I, I think the path to number one is very clearly there. I'd be a little surprised if they weren't in the top three. I, 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 yeah, I, I would. I would be too. If they weren't top three, I'd be surprised. Then, number then one is that, always. There's always some things that could go bounce the other way to be number one, but top three. And we're getting ready to talk about who we think are going to be the three best three-point shooting players or three-point shooters on this team. Um, And here's the deal. I think 
and we didn't share our lists, by the way. We, we I don't know who's on Carson's list. He does not know who's on mine. He wouldn't tell me. Fun. Well, there's I have a reason. There's a method to my madness because I think your number ones be different from mine, but we'll see. I'm gonna let you go first because if ours is the same, it's gonna ruin this whole thing. It's gonna <laughs> cry. Our lists are gonna be the exact same. It'd be pretty fun. It, it would be really funny if they were. I don't <laughs> think they're gonna be. But I could see I, if our number one's the same. I think our lists are going to be the same. I, I'll tell well, you. We got to go from three down to one. That's fair. That's yeah. Fair. Well, that's a good idea. That actually probably is a lot more exciting and a little. Yeah, it builds it up. Come on now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. But so you know, to sum up that conversation on my end here, I think that you're going to see the same offensive system, but you're going to see better athletes and better shooters in that system. Watching BYU play basketball, one of my favorite quotes, I just wrote an article about it over at Kentucky Wildcats on SI, and you know, it was a quote from Brandon Garrison talking about playing against Coach Pope's system last year. And he's like, y'all can watch it on tape all you want until you, like I like saying, like players, like you, you can watch mm-hmm. the offense on tape all you want until you go and face it. You'll never be ready for all the players cutting. Well, I know, I know that that and that makes total sense because Pope's offense is all about players making own decisions, right? Yeah. So some some will go under the screen, like over, like it's just a bunch of different decisions that playing together and practicing it so much that they'll know what decisions the other guys are making just because they've done it so often and they can read the they can make their decision based off the defender. So it, it makes the offense very unpredictable, which is nice. Yeah. It, it's going to be great. I mean, it's flat out. The offense is going to be elite. And like I said, the reason that we I, we both feel comfortable making that claim is just because the system is elite. That's already proven. Now you've got the players to fit it mm-hmm. at the end of the day. So, Carson, let's get into it. Let's get, let's get right on into it. Battle of the basketball brains tonight who is number three on your list uh i got ansley almanor as my number three okay then oh man i no, i love that but now i'm tr- i'm trying to decide what your list is going to be after you make your picks okay you want to give well, some yeah. now behind I, that i, I like ansley and i'll tell you why i like him at my number three because i could have gone I could have gone. A, I'm not going to tell you who I left off get yet because I don't. I don't want to give any spoilers. I think but, that's. I think it's going to be who I have at number three. But we'll tell but, me. Tell me if it is. Um, I just think. I mean, he made over four four three pointers in forty over for forty percent of his games last year. So yeah. I think he shoots it at a very very high clip, and I think he's going to get more run than people think. Yeah. Like more playing time. So, um, I'm excited to see him. I think. I think he's going to be a secret weapon for us. Honestly. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Do you know how many attempts he took per game last year from three, the number? I think it's – is it around seven or eight? It's seven, which yeah. is really, really absurd. High. That's really high. For a forward, that's that's really, really high. Yeah. And he shoot, and he shot at a high clip too. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. So, my number three guy, and it's bold. But we're gonna we're getting bold. Uh oh. It's Andrew Carr. Now let me let me let me rationalize this. Let me rationalize this. So Andrew Carr is a great shooter. We we know that. But this system, and I know people get so tired of hearing, well, the coach pub system. We say that because it it's so important and it's it's so true how how impressive the system is. But last year, I mean, you pull up Andrew Carr's log isn't it you know what's really it's funny about what i do for a living i know like pretty much every player's the points they averaged the season before and the three-point shooting percentage from the transfers like it's absurd like i know for a fact andrew carr shot 37 37.1 percent from three like i know that off the top of my head i just find yeah that he's Probably looking little. at it on his phone right next to him no i knew that <laughs> for a f- okay i've had enough of you i've had enough of you but so then you look at these numbers. I do have it up, but I knew that for a fact. Okay, so just Ooh. let's – okay, pipe down. Deflate gate. But deflate gate, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, like, look at the numbers. You know, shot two, one, three, two, three, three, four, four, three, six, three, two, five, seven, four. You know, there's a couple zeros and ones mixed in there here and there where he wasn't shooting a ton of threes. The reason I bring up – and those were his three-pointers taken per game. 
the reason I bring that up is I think that he's going to be shooting a good amount per game this year. I, I'm not – do I want Andrew Carr shooting seven threes? Yeah, that's another conversation for another day. That, you know, I think but, it'll be solely based game to game. Yeah, to I agree honest. too. Because but, there's going to be games where they, they leave him to be the, yeah. the pop guy. And if he's the pop guy and he's not contested, I mean, he's going to shoot that every time. Yeah. So um, there'll be games where he shoots seven, eight, maybe even nine. And then there'll be games where he shoots two or one. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Um, and if he shoots 40% around there, somewhere in that 38, 42% range oh, on four attempts per game, you know, you take that four or five attempts a game. And I think he's going to do that. And I think the value he brings as, you know, uh, a point forward uh, of being able to dribble and, and shoot and pass. I really think that stuff matters. So is, yeah, I, I, are there uh, better shooters on this team than him? And we <laughs> also have to add the caveat. Like, I don't know what your list, I don't have Travis Perry on my list. I, because I, I don't I, have I don't have him on my list either. Just because you know, he's I the don't, best shooter on yeah, this. Yeah, just because he's I don't think he, he's going to get as much time as exactly. all these other guys. So, play. That. so we agree on that. So I want to reiterate, like that's why. But yeah. I think that so we're when we're talking about the I'd say too deep the shooter roster. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about best shooters, but we're also talking about how important their three point shooting will be. There's going to be a player or two not on my list that is a better shooter. Ainsley Almanor is a better three-point shooter than Andrew Carr. That's reality. But I think Andrew Carr shooting, his ability to shoot the three, will be more valuable to this team than Ainsley Almanor's. Yeah, that's I, can, why I, I have him. Carr. I can consider him yeah. for sure. And that's why I have him three over Almanor, who, you know, once again, I, I and I did too. I considered Ainsley Almanor. But I think that... He's a better shooter than Carr, but I think Carr's threes be more valuable to this team. It's so nice that, to have the problem to discuss th this. Yes. Yeah, you know. Because there's like seven, eight guys you could I, I had on. Yeah. Like, I mean, two. they're all good shooters. So, who do you got it to? For number two, I got Kirk Krissa. Go ahead. And that is because I think he's going to come off the bench and be like somewhat – I'm not going to say – uh, I'm not going to compare him to him because it's a crazy comparison, but somewhat of like a Steph Curry role. And he's just going to fire up shots. I mean, his shooting percentage at Arizona, he would take tons of them. And he shot yeah. over 40%, I'm pretty sure. I think it's 42, actually. Um, I think last year, I was, let's test my knowledge. I think he shot 42.4% from three last year. I'm going to look it up now. I was not looking uh, it up, but go ahead. Yeah, but um, so he's going to shoot a lot of them and he's going to shoot at a high clip. And the importance to me is he's going to be that spark off the bench that you need. <laughs> told you. I told you I know. I said, hey, I was close, though. You got to give me my props, too. I said 42. But um, he uh, he's going to come off the bench and give you the spark that you need. Maybe if you're, you're starting fives, having a down night. So I yeah. think his shooting is going to be very impactful for this team. I think we're going to go – I think that we're about to do the same thing and people are going to be really mad about it. I'm really yeah. excited to hear your number one. I'm mm -hmm. really excited. I, I, cause this is, um, people are, cause I think people are mad at it, mad about it, but like, you know, in a let's debate way, not like, yeah. a, you know, pitchforks at my house way. But, um, I also have Kirk Reese said number two, that is a little, so we're sorry to be boring here, but <laughs> I think that, you know, Lamont Butler is your point guard who is going to come in and facilitate and defend. And he'll score when you let him. He can score in bunches when he needs to. He has the 24, 25-point games. He can do it. But that's his role. Kirk Kreese's role is to come off the bench and light fire, you know. Like, that. that's it. You know, he's about to come out there and make stuff yeah. happen. He, he, Coach Pope is going to check him in and be like, start shooting, son. Just fire him up. Yeah. And he's, and that he's 40, just going to start chucking him. That 42.4%, which, you know, I knew off the top of my head because I'm a literal genius, as you all found out the other day when I tried to read the word familiarity. But um, that's on five attempts per game. Once again, this is we're not talking about a guy that's going one for three. You know, we're, we're not. Five attempts a game is nuts. Averaging yeah. five is nuts. Well, it's nuts, sir, that Almanor averaged 
seven. Yeah, that's that. That's I, I am very starting to buy into the Almanor. I am too. We talked about that the day, I think. Did yeah. we talk about that a little bit on Monday? I think so. Um, but I think Creesa, once again, I am talking about, I'm ranking this list. Now, I do think Creese is a better pure shooter than Almanor and um, Andrew Carr. But I am basing my list based on how valuable I think the threes are going to be to the team. So that is, that's my reasoning. And I think Kirk Creese coming off the bench and being the guy off the bench that's, hey, score the basketball. You know we I mean? need a bucket. He's going to be the guy. He's, um, he's taking the shot. And that's what I'm saying. That is why his three is going to be so valuable, but he's also just a flat-out great shooter. Carson, yeah. who do you have number one? I have uh, Kobe Brea at number one. And it's because, I mean, you don't have Kobe? I, oh. I went bold. I went bold. Okay. Well, at least we're giving you some entertainment because I thought we were going to have some su such more similar lineups. But um, Kobe, I picked Kobe because, I mean, he's – shot 50 percent from three he's the greatest technically the greatest shooter in the last decade in college basketball so it's hard not to pick him and i've heard really good things about him in practice yeah. uh and people just around the program saying that he absolutely can't miss so i'm really excited to see him in blue and white i know if you all haven't seen haven't watched i recommend go watching his dayton highlights because yeah he can fill it up and he he had the ball a lot too. Like he could score off the dribble, which was nice. Um, so I think I think he's going to be the best shooter on the team. So uh, if we would have done this list, you know, I, I think that we did it a little bit differently. And because Kobe Bear is the best shooter on this team, shooter. I think that when it you comes, you picked Jackson to, Robinson, didn't you? I picked Jackson Robinson. Yeah. I think that Jackson Robinson is the best player on this basketball team. Uh, what did we hear about the La Familia scrimmage? The dude had like 32 threes. Like, I, I think that Jackson Robinson's importance to this team. So here's the deal. If we would have expected – I didn't pick him so he can use it as fuel. Yeah, bolt and board material. Man, that Carson Nash, <laughs> yeah. I hate him. But um, if so, once again, I want to keep reiterating what I was the the thought behind this list for me, so people aren't like, "Oh man, what is this guy yapping about?" Um, Kobe Bray, when it comes to importance, I, I think when it comes to shooting the three ball for me, would have been four on my list. I think that Andrew Carr, when you add the size, you know, and the ability to to really you know stretch the floor, spread the floor, spread the floor, even even the fact that he is like actually the greatest college basketball shooter in the past decade, like. And he, he yeah. how many attempts did he have a game last year? I don't know that. I don't know. I don't know that, honestly. But um, my reasoning, so you have to understand, I'm, I just have a feeling that when it comes to the value, a three-point shot like, comes from I'm just players. now. Now I'm a little surprised because he didn't make the list at all. He, but you have to understand, I think that we took this list two different directions. I took it value. I just said he's the best shooter on this team. I'm talking about the value. It's almost like I think we know what we're getting from him, three-point shooting. He's going to yeah. shoot 45% from three. So, you know, I, I really want – like, ladies and gentlemen. It'll I be one of those – I feel like Kobe will be one of those guys where he's just averaging, like, 18 points a game, but it's, like, you the quietest so? 18. I, I, I swear. Have a, I, have I feel a, really good about him. All right, here let me let me let me let me spit something here. And I think I agree with you though. I think Jackson will be the best player on the team. I but, agree. But do you see what I'm talking about when it comes to the value their threes are gonna bring? I, I just think because for Kerr, what I'm saying is he's gonna come off the bench and be the guy that has to fill it up. That's what he has to be. That's gonna bring a ton of value. Andrew Carr is going to be the big guy who shoots. We watched, um, you know, the the Ali Khalifa last year from a BYU. Now I'm pretty sure he was there five, but points, you know, and Carr will be the four. But point is, you know, Coach Pope likes big guys who can facilitate, pass, and shoot. And I think that's why Carr's me so valuable. I I have a bold take here, and I I'm probably going to be wrong. I'm wrong all the time. I have a feeling that now I think that. I think that Kobe Bray ends up being the third best three point shooter on this team. That's crazy. I understand. If you want to yell at me, go to go to Carson's house, yell at him instead. But I think that statistically and makes per game, I have a feeling that 
Jackson Robinson and Kirk Kreese to have a better shooting year than Kobe Brea. Not that he's going to be bad. I'm not saying that. He is not going to be bad. He's going to be great. I think that they're going to be better. I just do. Um, I could be wrong. I'm wrong often. But this is just my feeling. I think Jackson Robinson is going to be one of the best players in college basketball this season. And I think Kirk Kreese is going to be your Reed Shepard, Rob Dillingham off the bench where he comes in and just fills it up. He could even yeah, be the second or third best leading scorer on the team. Um, so that's my rationale. If y'all think I'm crazy, I understand. I even I know it sounds crazy. I do. I, Kobe I understand. Brea will be the best three point shooter on this team. You feel that way? You fully feel that way? Yes, a hundred percent. Because you got to think. I think Jackson will probably have more attempts, which makes yeah. his percentage go down. And I think Kobe is going to get so many more open looks because he's not on Dayton. I do think this system, this system is going to help him get more looks. Okay, you're talking me out of my take. I tried to make a bold take, and you're talking me out of it. You got Jackson Robinson that's going to handle the ball and get Kobe open. Yeah. Do you see where I'm coming from at all? No, I do. I do. I agree with you. I agree with you because I see what you're trying to go. I don't disagree with you. And I I somewhat feel that way as well. Like, Jackson Robinson is going to be the most important player on the team regardless. Point blank, period. He's he's the best player on our team, and I, I fully agree with that statement. But I'm just saying I don't think we should undershadow that Kobe yeah. Brea. Kobe Brea is like better shooter than Jack Gold. Like that's what yeah. we don't understand. Well, so am I. But <laughs> so let me explain this one more way. I'm trying to what I'm trying to do right now is put out the fire that is going to be coming toward me in the YouTube comments. I'm trying to put that out. As we progressively go here. So let me, no, let me burn it. Okay. Light the match. Let me <laughs> let me give one more spiel at this. Just hear me out one more time. Who do I think is the best natural shooter on this basketball team? It's Kobe Bray, and I don't think it's relatively close. Who do um now? Well, if you're just saying that, then you gotta throw in Travis. That's actually a really good point. That's fair. That's a good point. Uh, that's that's it. You make a solid point. I, I, frankly, I think Travis might end up being just as good. A better that's player. what I'm saying. I, I but, agree uh, with you. So let me let let me give this spiel. So w- what I was ranking my list off when it went Robinson, Creesa, Carr. I'm trying to argue that how important the threes will be to the team. There's not an unimportant three. I'm not saying that, but I think that like. Kobe Bray's role is to come in and shoot threes. We know he's going to be here to make threes. He's going to, you know, go three for five, two for five every game. I think we know that. We know the value. The opposing teams watching his film are going to know that. Everyone knows that. The question is, where can you get other threes? You know what I mean? That's what I was kind of basing this off of. Um, And then when it comes to my percentage thing, I just have – this is my thing. I have a feeling – I think that Kobe Bray is going to – he's going to shoot over 40%. I'm not disputing that. I just think that Jackson Robinson and Kirk Reese are going to have career seasons. So, and I think you think, as okay. so you're you're in full belief that Kobe Brea goes from Dayton shooting 50% to shooting lower at Kentucky with more weapons around him. I, I say the only way that happens is if he shoots more than the attempts that he shot last year. I, I don't think shooting 50% is is over a you know It's just it can't be that sustainable. No, I, I agree. And it's the SEC. There, you got more athletes. You got better defenders. But when you've done it for four years, like, yeah, I agree with you. It I agree. To look I like think that I agree with what you. I'm not disputing this at all. I, I don't. Okay, can I say what I'm thinking, but not saying? Yeah. I don't think I don't think Kobe Bray is going to have as elite of a season as everyone's putting it out to be. I, I don't. That's my take. I didn't. I try not to be negative about things people are really excited about because I know people are excited about Kobe Bryant, and I am too. I think that he's going to end up the value. Boy, in- when you got that hot hand, man, there's nothing that can stop you. I agree. You know? Like, I agree. You've seen it? Watch. I've I've watched every second of his film. I don't – it's a it's a bold take. Give me a bold fantasy football take right now, Carson. Do you not I'm have any saying, bold fantasy no, no, football I'm just saying, though, like when a shooter gets hot, I, it does not matter if three people are on him or if nobody's on him. It's yeah. going to go in. I agree with you. I'm just th- – that's my bold take. You can't bold take shame. Bold fantasy football take is Saquon's RB1. No. 
No. A bold fantasy football take is Raheem Mostert outplays A-Chan again this year. And Cooper Cup has a better year than Puka Nakua. Take well, those that, home that with you. Cooper one is factual. Yes. Take those two fantasy nuggets from me, not what he said. And don't well, you say, don't well, you dare. Put the crown on me, buddy. Back-to-back okay. -back champs. Just bumps into a championship back-to-back -back years and acts like he's yeah. king crap all of a sudden. Whatever. I'm winning this year. It's in the story. But we'll focus so, on making the playoffs. I think that we can have this argument again. I am not, I want to say this one more time. I am just trying, I am just, I'm trying to not pour gasoline on the fire. I'm trying to put water on it. I want to one more time. I do not think Kobe Bray is going to have a bad season. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying, I don't think he's going to come to Kentucky and do exactly what he did last year. And I think that he's, he, I think he's going to shoot 40, 41, 42%. I do. I really do. You're saying better system and all that, and that's all true. But also, I mean, there are better, quicker closeouts. He just has to. Athletes. He just, in my opinion, he just has to do less to get the I, same. Success. I don't disagree with you. It's just a gut feeling. I could be wrong. I mean, my goodness, I, I, I you know, I, I very well could be wrong. You're not letting me live this one down. You're, you're not letting me. Just be I like, came okay, to argue cool. today. I put my uh, right. debating hat on today. All right. All right. Well, you are. Never mind. Um, they haven't seen it. They haven't seen it, me and you debate. I don't think. Yeah, but that's, yeah. that's more in the phone call. <laughs> yeah, but normally, then I get really angry about things. Yeah, that's what happens. That's what generally. That's happens. what happened. I, it all started when he he got blocked by me in basketball. Yeah, that was. It was not Cried you. It was AJ. Home. It was. It was me. AJ was recording it. Oh, and then I walked home. I Shout walked out home AJ. Home. Shout out AJ. Walked home. All right. Quick recruiting nugget. We both predict Malachi Moreno to commit to Kentucky tomorrow morning. Carson, what would you say your confidence level is? Um, well, just say it. Just say it. I, I'd say 10. Yeah, I I think this one's this one's over. 10%? No, out of 10. One out of 10? He's a 10 out of 10. He's a lot. You just make that up? Do it because I said I, I whatever. I'm going to say 100%. I feel very confident he's going to Kentucky. I, it would be very – and we, we've seen we've seen this stuff happen in, in recruiting over history. Sometimes it happens, but I, I don't think it is. Yeah, I think Malcolm Moreno is staying at home. Um, and if he does commit to Kentucky, we'll have a show um, quickly right after he does. We're going to break it down, talk about what what who is he as a player, stuff like that. So be ready for that if he does pick Kentucky. Any other thoughts, Carson, before we call it a day? None, none other than I hope y'all get them in the comments. Don't get me in the comments. Don't don't do that. Be, be you, you can be nice. You can be nice. You can get me and be nice. That's fine. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Get them. Um. Yeah. No. Nothing out of pocket. How about that? Let's keep it in pocket. In the pocket. Um. So if Malachi commits to Kentucky tomorrow, we'll have a pod for you. Hopefully, pretty quickly after he commits. Um. And then um, that's the plan there. So there we go. But yeah, let us know y'all's thoughts in the comments. Is it a crazy take to say that Kentucky is going to be the best three-point shooting team in college basketball? Let us know that in the YouTube comments. Hope everyone has an outstanding rest of their Thursday. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Hopefully we're really we excited tomorrow. tomorrow at 1130. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. I feel pretty confident we will. But hope everyone has a great rest of your day today, and we will see you next time.